Somebody's hurting my brother and it's gone on far too long. Earlier this year, President Trump declared a false national emergency that perpetuated division and hate. However, there are actually real emergencies throughout this country that need to be confronted immediately. Over 30 state campaigns organized their own National Emergency Truth and Poverty bus tours as part of this national effort. We set out to do three things. Um, shift the narrative, impact elections and policies, and to build power amongst the 140 million poor people. And we still have that work to do. So what we see happening in 2019 into 2020 is, is deep and broad organizing. Um, across North Carolina, across Alabama, across South Carolina, across California, across Pennsylvania, across all of these 40 states that people are organizing in. We, the Poor People's Campaign, are building the unity of humankind all across this nation. Right. Some folk call it the fusion movement. Right. And that's the deepest unity you can get. This nation has a problem mm. yes, with does. good morality. Right. When sick people cannot get health care, this is not just a health care problem, this is a moral problem. That's right. That's right. America yeah. needs some soul cleansing. Yes, yeah. it does. Washington needs some soul cleansing. Yes. We need a moral revival that's tethered to a health care provision. Yes. This nation has a problem with democracy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know your state legislators have drawn a crooked line crooked, yes. uh, and drew it right through the middle of this prestigious campus. Right. Don't try to split us. Don't try to manipulate our votes so you get us voting here or voting there as a minority block or not even voting at all because we don't know where we are supposed to vote, okay. right. given the way the lines are drawn. And so we are saying, don't mess with our limited slice of democracy that we won through blood, sweat, and yes. tears. Okay. Don't mess with it. We're not organizing in our silos. We're organizing in our fusion. We're organizing by bringing people together that traditionally politicians have said can't come together. And many of them are only not together because of the games that have been played. We've decided no more games. Tell the truth. People can handle it. And let's build a movement that addresses systemic racism, poverty, ecological devastation, the war economy, and the false moral narrative of religious and nationalism. And we do that, we can transform the state, the South, and we can really begin to see some different things happen. We won't be silent anymore. The North Carolina leg of the National Emergency Truth and Poverty Tour visited and heard from people struggling with homelessness, gentrification, voter suppression, ecological devastation, our deteriorating education system, pressures on the immigrant community, and more. Our writers found poor and working poor people who are not giving up, but instead are speaking up, creating solutions, and taking action. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! Tour writers listened to life stories of homeless men who clarified that homelessness is not often a voluntary condition. I've been at the men's shelter in and out for about five years now. Um, I got out of the military in 2013. It's been a difficult trans, like a transition um, from the soldier lifestyle to you know the civilian lifestyle. Um, I have overcome a lot of obstacles, like such as divorce, um, such as you know just trying to find a job and trying to find housing. Um, but since I've been at the men's shelter like of Charlotte, it has been a wonderful transition. I have discovered that I have a gift, that I can sing, um, and I have a passion for singing. Um, so, you know, just like the men's shelter of Charlotte has actually cultivated me. You are holy, oh, so holy. And toward neighborhoods experiencing rapid gentrification in Charlotte's historically black community. But it's really economics. And so what are we doing to try to retain our neighbors? One, we're doing tax relief workshops. We're talking to our electors about political will, finding creative ways and educating people on how to maintain their properties. 
if you find yourself in an existing established neighborhood that has a rich history like the historic West End, know its worth, know its value, understand that not only do the assets have value, the people are assets, they have value culturally, we have value together, uh, we are quite a force to reckon with. So come in, be kind, and let's work together. Our people, and it's gone on far too long. Tour riders rallied in Durham with Ashley, a young mother whose husband died in custody of the Durham County Jail. No reason for non-people to have died behind those walls in the last two years. And Muffin, who lost her home and job because she couldn't afford bail, forced to stay in jail for an alleged crime she did not commit. In 2013, I sat in Durham County Jail for 61 days, but my charges were dismissed. But with them being dismissed, I lost my home, I lost my job. My bail was originally $10,000, and the judge said it wasn't high enough, and he raised it to $30,000. And so I can honestly say that he's no longer a judge. Now we're together! Not one step back! Tour riders attended a town hall meeting in Maxton, where there are people who still can't get back into their homes months after Hurricane Florence. When you see everything you've worked for 50 years, floating down the river. We won't be Tour riders met with immigrant youth who shared the fear felt by the community when ice raids take family members away, when children are segregated and when the government is creating a climate of hostility. Tour riders marched on the gerrymandered voting district line in Greensboro that the Republican legislator established to split the black student vote and heard the testimonies of students calling for change. As marginalized citizens of North Carolina, as marginalized citizens of the United States of America, we know all too well the power and the weight that our voices hold. And we will not quiet until our votes are as strong as our voices. Mm -hmm. right. The tour visited Robeson County where four frack gas pipelines are scheduled to merge into a massive gas compression station within one mile of an historically indigenous Lumbee tribal school. We're standing at the alleged terminus of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. The pipeline is a proposed 600 mile pipeline that will run from West Virginia through Virginia to this very spot. Uh, the whole purpose of this pipeline is really to take it all the way to Elba Island, Georgia to export it, to raise the price and to send it to Europe to take Europe off the gas, natural gas from the Soviet Union, from, from Russia. So this pipeline is being built in the name of jobs and economic development in Virginia and the Carolinas. And it really has nothing to do with helping us or helping our state. In fact, there are four pipelines intersecting in this space here, uh, including the one that they are denying is going to connect to South Carolina and to Georgia in the middle of the Lumbee and Tuscarora community here, which is the largest population of indigenous peoples in the United States east of the Mississippi River. The tour riders joined a mass rally where thousands of educators from around the state rallied and rocked for improvement in education system funding, which has been under attack for more than a decade. If you mess with teachers yeah. and you mess with support staff yeah. and those who work for less than 15 in a union yeah. and those who have need of Medicaid expansion, yeah. you've gone too far. Yeah. We must teach them a lesson. Yeah. If you seek to divide us yeah. and play games with us, It'll only bring us closer together. Yeah. We must teach them a lesson. Yeah. If it means protesting in the street, yeah. if it means protesting in the legislature, yeah. if it means some of us going to jail, yeah. and if you don't get the lesson that way, right. we will organize, yeah. turn out the vote, yeah. put you on recess, yeah. and vote your hind parts out of office. Yeah. Hey! We won't be The Colorado Poor People's Campaign, in coordination with the Poor People's Campaign and National Call for Moral Revival, highlighted these emergencies around the state and lifted the narratives of those who are experiencing harm from poverty, systemic racism, ecological devastation, and the war economy. For Colorado's first stop on April 6th, 
We visited Lafayette, where a community and a nearby school are in fear of the fracking activity and the bids to expand oil and gas operations. The health impacts of drilling, as well as the enormous wealth the oil and gas industry wields to push their agenda, have made this fight both urgent and daunting. Marty Pfeffer from East Boulder County United spoke about the greed and health threats of the Colorado oil and gas industry. America, a society where people are in constant battle for our shelter, our food, our water, our health, and so much more. Our desire for justice and well-being is constant. One of the biggest obstacles in this fight is having enough time and energy to pay the bills and feed the family and it can suck the life right out of you. What's been promised to us by those with power and resources never arrives and eventually we throw up our hands and say, I give up. Or the rage, the spirit, and the heart just erupts and you say, I've had enough. I'm not playing games anymore. I'm not letting those with power win this one. Members of Community United Church of Christ in Boulder shared their reflections on working for justice since the original 1968 Poor People's Campaign. I have been working with this issue for almost as long as I've been a social activist. And poverty is uh, that which makes people feel unworthy, feel disregarded. We need to uphold them, support programs for them, uh, be there, uh, and uh, just as the Poor People's Campaign is doing. I was in uh, North Carolina when Reverend Barber spoke at one of the Moral Mondays, and I, I feel like, I, I can feel his presence here that is so powerful and he's such a wonderful spokesman for the whole issue of those on the edge, those who are poor. Forward together! Forward together! Not one step back! Won't be silent anymore! For our second stop, we visited the Geo Immigrant Detention Center, which has been plagued by complaints of using unpaid labor, not treating detainees who have medical issues and overall abuse. Anna Rodriguez, an undocumented macro social worker who is leading the Colorado Progressive Alliance's immigrant justice organizing, lifted up the stories of families whose lives have been torn apart by ICE's cruel detention and separation policies. This detention center, like Vinny said, is uh, not just, um, you know, profiting off of the pain of our community, off of the separation of our community. Um, they're literally charging people $6 for a ramen noodles cup. Uh, they're charging people for a blanket so that they can stay warm at night. Um, they're, they're making so much money um, off of folks that don't have money to give. Um, and on top of that, um, they're facing uh, daily abuses because their pain isn't being recognized. We're fighting um, every day with impacted families, with people who have loved ones in this detention center, with people who are in this detention center themselves um, to shut it down um, and to finally put an end to all of the abuses happening um, within this detention center. Um, we know that um, it is a, a huge fight um, to go after um, corporations, to go after after the systems that are currently benefiting from um, centers like this um, existing. Um, but we know that um, the way we're gonna make that happen is uniting with folks in the community who also care like we do um, about human lives, about um, our immigrant community, about getting rid of these for-profit corporations. And we know that the Poor People's um, Campaign um, is a movement that um, shares that vision with us, that knows that um, together um, we can make um, huge things like this a reality and make our vision a reality. Attorney T.A. Taylor Hunt spoke about the need for marginalized communities to unite, to learn more about the prejudicial laws impacting them, and to organize fearlessly for justice. I've been an advocate, I think, my life, for my entire life. I also served in that war economy. I was in the Air Force for 25 years. I've been a practicing attorney now for 20 years. I know what it is to fight, and I know how hard it is to fight. And when you're talking about these families, one of the things that we all need to keep in mind is that they do need some support. It's not just the, the physical things they need, but they need access to resources. And that's one of the reasons why 
I came today with my grandson and we've been involved in situations like this, but these families that she's crying over, we need to not just cry for them. We need to get them connected to attorneys who can make sure that they have the proper documentation, not necessarily the documentation for staying in the country, but if one of them is deported, the documentation so that someone is in place to care for their children. The last thing they want is to be separated and their children go into foster care when their children may very well be American citizens. So we need to connect people. It's not that difficult to do the documents that say, God forbid something should happen to me, this is the person who should take care of my children. So that's sort of a preventive piece that doesn't solve the problem, but it can prevent it from getting to be much worse. Um, I was down at the Capitol last week testifying on some legislation. That's not something that everyone gets an opportunity to do, nor has the time to do. We sat for seven hours to get to speak our piece, but it wasn't our piece. It's other people's piece that we have to share and speak on whenever we have the opportunity. So one of the things that I, I really wanted to say here is one, I am so glad that Colorado is engaging in the Poor People's Campaign. I, it is absolutely critical. I travel to other states and when I see other places more engaged than us, you know, it kind of makes me sad, but I also know that it begins with one step and you all have done that, you know, it, we just keep going. It doesn't matter if you're the only one yelling in the crowd, we still have to do it or else I'm here to tell you, people will think you don't exist. Members of the Colorado Poor People's Campaign sang and marched their banner to the front door of ICE as nervous security guards readied for action. Oh, somebody's hurting our people and it's gone on far too long and we won't be silent anymore. We won't be silent. On April 27th, we stopped in Denver to spotlight the narratives of people experiencing homelessness. Legislation to legal battles, a resurrection village to tiny homes. There has been a sustained movement of people experiencing homelessness in Denver who have fought for transformative solutions that have prioritized the voices and experiences of the poor. The tour was led by Benjamin Dunning of Denver Homeless Out Loud. It's all about optics. They just don't want uh, uh, homelessness visible. And that's the response from the city is we don't want to see you. We don't want to see you. And there's the promise of services that are already overflowing. Um, and, and in a lot of cases, uh, those services um, aren't appropriate for folks. Like there's a lot of folks in this camp that work. And so going into the shelters and the uh, time frame that the shelters are set up for doesn't work for them. So they have to find another option if they're going to keep their jobs or for couples, they split up couples. Couples can't stay together. So most couples will decide like, we don't want to spend 12 hours a day separated from each other. We're going to stay together. We get through this, we can get through anything. So, and, 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 and that doesn't even get into the condition of the shelters and, and things like that. It started at El Centro Humanitario, visited a strip of Colfax Avenue, stopped to speak with the unhoused at Sunny Lawson Park and ended at the Jerryville encampment where we witnessed the Denver police harassment of the unhoused who had been chased from spot to spot across the city the previous 24 hours. People don't understand. When you talk about privacy, when you talk about respect, when you talk about dignity, I can give a person a tip. And, and the joy that I see when they get that tent and they know that tent belongs to them, they know they're going to have privacy. It's damn near as, as important and as uh, satisfying giving them a key to an apartment. Right. And that is the most blessed thing that I ever seen. And then yesterday when I seen them come over there with the threats and moving us along, um, it's it hurting. Yeah. Yeah. But yet it's still, they tell me they're following the law. Me personally, me and being a Marine, I'm not going to follow my commander if he go and tell me to kill kids. That's right. Can't okay? Follow, can't follow an illegal order. Exactly. Right. Whether it's an order legally or, but it's 
as a justification to different orders and different laws. Right. But yeah, it's still, I do understand the police got a job to do. But within your own self, you have to understand why am I displacing this American citizen yeah. or this Denver resident yeah. Yeah. on an unjust law? We're not in a position to, uh, at this time, <coughs> succeed in most of these battles. We're not going to succeed in most of them. The key is, is the community. They break up the yeah. tent city here. They break yeah. up the county here. Yeah. But if we can preserve community, that's the key to establish a war of leaders. No matter, they, right. no matter how they disperse, no matter how dispersed they're right. broken up, yeah. they still have that factor of organization and union solidarity. Well, uh, we have to understand that we all is in this together. One world, one community, until the high up or the rich come down to our level and understand what our play is, they will never understand because they've never been into our play. Initiative 300, in addition to tiny homes, the urban camping ban, and a class action lawsuit, has escalated a heated debate about pr approaches to homelessness in Denver, and more importantly, who is leading efforts to shape the community's solutions and whose voices and experiences are being left out. This is a, a systemic problem. The there is constantly an individual blame put to say it's an individual problem. You're lazy, you're drug addicted, you're mentally ill, you're this, you're that. You need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps or you, you know, or you're just your individual situation that needs to be worked through or whatever. Um, and that just simply doesn't match up with the, re with the facts, with the reality, with the data. Um, we, we, we had people who were drug addicted before the early 80s and we didn't have mass homelessness. We had people who were lazy before the early 80s and we didn't have mass homelessness. Um, and, and that type of a, a narrative that just blames individuals um, instead of looking at our systemic um, crisis um, in our housing market, in our economy, in our healthcare system um, is one that is, is detrimental not only to folks who are on the streets, but to our whole society as we continue to um, have this sort of tension um, and, and fight um, just, just to basically have the right to survive. This is all of our movement. It's all the same fight. You know, this is about poor people. <laughs> I um, mean, uh, the Right to Survive initiative is, is here because we have an economic crisis in our society where people have no choice but to live on the streets. Um, and so, you know, it's the same fight as the fight against gentrification, um, the fight for, uh, you know, against police brutality. It's all tied together. Um, so it's, it's awesome to be able to be, you know, together with a, a Poor People's Campaign umbrella. The Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, is indeed a movement, not a moment so we can expect to hear many more stories in the months and years ahead. Forward together, not one step back. He won't be Somebody's hurting our people And it's gone on far too long And we won't be silent anymore. We won't be silent.